Hey, everybody, it's Warren. Good evening. Good evening. Hello, everyone. Hi. Hello. Good evening, everyone. How you doing? Good, Michelle. Good. So we'll give it a few more minutes. Okay, I see our company is here. Okay, we'll give it one more minute while they bring in other people. And then we can get started after that. I'll let you know, Suki. Hey, Suki, can you hear me?
Suki, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Suki? I think she's oh, trying to get her audio situated. Oh, okay. okay. I'm, I'm like, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? We can't hear you, Pat. You can't I can, we can hear. I can hear her. Yep. She's good to go. Okay. I got it. I just got, oh, great. Okay. So, so it is now, what time do you have? 7.05? 7.06. Oh, okay. I'm, okay. I'm a minute behind. <laughs> okay. I want to say good evening to everyone. Um, we're going to call the meeting to order. The rules of uh, Community Board 9 are in place. We're just asking everyone to um, respect each other and do and use the raise hand functions. And we're going to listen to everybody that like no arguing back and forth with one another. Now the chat is back, but let's not chat all night. Let's listen to, okay? Um, also, I want to welcome um, all of the committee members and, and guests. Oh, and I see uh, our council uh, woman there, Crystal. Hi there. Good, e good evening. How are you? How are you doing? Great. Good. Thank you. And I think we have someone from, um, okay, where are they from? Is it Heston? Heston, Heston Street? And yeah, I'm from Heston. Might that be? Um, Casey Peterson. Hi. Okay, you can introduce yourself. Um, as a matter of fact, we could really get started now if you want to. Are we the first ones on the agenda? Yes, you are. Okay. I mean, I keep y'all too late, so we, we okay. might be here a while. No, I, I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> I'll I'll just give a quick introduction, and then Casey's going to give a presentation. Um, and I'm actually not able to stay on for the the whole time. So um, we have uh, have started or initiated um, a, a district-wide survey in District 35 that's really um, trying to get at what we know are, um, you know, deeply flawed systems that we have. Um, and we're trying to create, you know, better systems within those deeply flawed systems, if you will. Um, and so what uh, from my perspective, one of the biggest challenges in uh, the development process and land use process is in the ULERT process, generally we are approached by developers who have a fully baked plan already for a development. And then they come, as you all know, of course, best um, that they come to the community board, they come to your committee first and then to, to the community board. And then um, it's a lot of tinkering around the edges and we don't really have an opportunity. Community doesn't have an opportunity to really get at a lot of the, the you know, issues and challenges that we might have with said development. And so this survey is a way to, um, for our district specifically, um, to hear directly from community members. Um, so we're asking folks to it's a, it's a very short survey, but we're asking folks to just give their perspective on a number of items, which Casey will go into more detail about um, in a moment. Um, and this is really so that, um, you know, when my office is approached with a, a proposed project, I can say, you know, I've already surveyed my community. I've already heard from my community and I know what um, my community does and does not wanna see in particular neighborhoods or across the district. Um, you know, the, the survey is very specific. So we hope to have in the end of this, um, essentially like a rubric um, that would, you know, weight different values to different items. So for example, you know, open space versus um, the type of materials used on a particular project or what have you. Um, and it's really just an effort to give um, more voices to more people in the ULERT process, which is currently, you know, not really what happens. I mean, things are limited to the community board and then the borough president, um, but we're really asking everyday residents, people who may not be engaged with community boards, who may not go to public hearings, who may not, you know, know even what the ULERT process is, 
um, we're trying to engage those folks in this survey so that we can get their voices, um, you know, into this decision making process. So Casey will will give more of a formal presentation, but I just wanted to give the background and to um, how this came about. I'm happy to answer any questions specific to that before Casey starts the um, the presentation, if there are any. Okay, um, if, if you have a question, you can use the raise hand function. Okay, um, so if there are no, no further questions, then I think Casey I just a, mentioned- I had a quick question. Oh, oh you have it. one. Sorry, I raised my, yeah. <laughs> uh, what's the time frame for this, um, for this process? And then when do you expect to have something sort of to present as like, like, the, you know, that it's done basically. So are, it's like weeks or months or how yeah, long? Yeah, so this is the, these are the last few weeks. Um, the survey is running through the end of this month. It launched, I wanna say in January or February, Casey? Um, I think it was March. March yeah. of this year. Um, so we've been collecting survey results um, for a couple of months where we've held a number of public um, workshops as well as um, focus groups. And the last public workshop is on the 29th, I believe in the evening. So we'll be sharing that information out. Um, Dante and um, the district managers from all the other community boards in council district 35 are on the um, advisory council. So they've been meeting regularly with other folks who've, who've been on the advisory committee. Um, so that's the process. And then I think we won't have the formal sort of output or rubric as I'm calling it probably until sometime over the summer. Okay, is there anyone else? I don't see anyone. Mia, do you see any, anyone else? Uh, no, I believe Esteban was it. Uh, Casey, you should have the privileges now if made to co-host. Awesome. Thank you all for allowing us the opportunity. And I'm I'm going to jump off, but okay, Casey's Crystal. here to answer any further questions. Thank you. Crystal, thank you for coming. Thank you all. Take care. All right. Talk to you. All right. So you can see the screen with the slides. Okay. Great. Hi, everyone. Good evening. My name is Casey Peterson. I work at Hester Street. We're a nonprofit urban planning and community engagement organization based in New York City. So the office of Councilmember Hudson brought us on to work on this land use planning process that the council member just touched on. And I'll go into a little more specifics in terms of, you know, the who, what, when, where, why, how. Um, I just have about 10 slides. It should be pretty brief, but we want to make sure you're looped in and um, that also you can help us spread the word about the survey in its final weeks. So um, this is sort of a, a recap of what the council member just shared, um, but we want to make sure that new development that happens in Council District 35 is informed by community input. So whether that means creating more affordable housing or providing more access to open space in certain parts of the community that have less access to parks, we're really leaving that to the community to tell us what is needed. Um, and we launched a survey, which I can put in the chat. Um, I'll put the short link here just so you can get that open. Um, and it's closing at the end of June and we have about 650 responses so far, but we really want to get it closer to 2000. So we're doing a really big push this month. Um, I was just at Grand Army Plaza Library spreading the word there. Um, and we could really rely on, on you to help us get the word out to your neighbors and, and other civic groups. Um, and I will, that's like the big takeaway. And then I will just go through 
the background. Um, so we know that land use planning can be flawed. Oftentimes when projects come to your committee, the project's almost fully baked. There's little room to really change the, the project in a significant way. Um, so we wanna make sure that we're kind of front loading that community engagement process before projects come along through ULERP so that the council member in her preliminary conversations with developers can have an informed approach and be able to negotiate using input from her constituents. So again, we are, my office is working with the council member's office on this, um, but we're also engaging a lot of people along the way. So we're hosting our third public workshop on June 29th in the evening. Um, it will be somewhere in Crown Heights. We're still working to secure a location, but if you are signed up for the council members' emails, you'll find out um, as soon as that's confirmed. We'll also be sure to share it with your district manager. Um, we've also held focus groups across six different topic areas related to land use. Uh, we have the survey and a social media campaign. We've been making use of Link NYC kiosks and then showing up at events, tabling opportunities, canvassing um, civic groups, really trying to get the word out in any way possible. And then we also assembled an advisory committee to help with outreach and to keep us kind of honest in the process. So I just listed those organizations here. And uh, Dante, your district manager, has been attending on behalf of the community board. So overall, the goal is to understand community needs and priorities as they relate to land use, and then use that information once we get all the survey responses in to develop a vision for the whole district, which I recognize does not encompass all of CB9, but it's a good chunk of it. Um, and then in doing so, we'll create a new blueprint for how land use decisions are made. And we're hoping this can be a replicable, replicable model that maybe other council members would be interested in taking up if it's successful. So the final framework that will come out of this could be used by developers who are thinking of um, proposing development that would go through ULERP in Council District 35. And it would give them the information they need to determine whether their proposal will be approved. Um, and if not, what they can do to change it to better meet the needs of community members. But it will be a publicly available document. So it's also a checklist for the community to use and an accountability mechanism as well. And again, this is, um, just applying to projects going through ULERP in Council District 35, really trying to leverage the council member's role in the ULERP process on city council to change the narrative about how development gets done in New York City. And I just wanna clarify this initiative is not a rezoning and it's, it's a district-wide uh, project and it is separate from the Atlantic Avenue rezoning that is happening simultaneously uh, which is known as AMOP, and I'm sure some of you have been attending those meetings separately. And then someone asked about timeline. Um, you know, we are nearing the end of our outreach period. Like I said, the survey will close at the end of the month. And then the final framework, um, you know, the calendar here ends in June, but the final framework will most likely be released um, July, August, as we're working to incorporate all the feedback we get from the survey and other outreach methods. So that's really all I wanted to cover today um, and really hope you can help us get the word out, but I would be happy to take any questions. Okay, um, Mia, um, can you get a list so we can know who? Sure thing. Yeah, we need uh, to. Casey, you have to stop share, uh, sharing your screen so I can see. Give me one moment. Okay. Uh, we have Esteban and then Nicola. 
That's it. And I see Mr. Thomas. Uh, can I go? You're good. Okay. Um, so I more I guess more of a concern than a than a question. I um, when I came to like I'd been to some of the AMOP meetings and had heard about this uh, separately from the CB9. And um, when I informed the Euler committee about it, nobody had heard anything. This was just like a couple of weeks ago. Um, we had no idea there was even going to be something in Ronald McNair Park, which is in Community Board Nine. Um, and so like if the Euler committee didn't know what was going on, then obviously like the, we need to do a better job of, of outreach. Uh, that leaves basically like a couple of weeks to get everyone that we know um, involved. And like I said, like some of us had, you know, some other connections to to CB8, which I think was more involved in this process, but um, but it really, the word really didn't get out over here. As, as, as just from what I can tell. So just wanted to let you know that and then uh, to see what we can do to, you know, it seems like a short timeline, um, especially since we're just learning about it. But um, but yeah, what what uh, what we can do to help, um, you know, get the word out on this. So you were saying a separate committee within CB9, the Euler committee was unaware. No, the the yeah, this committee, the committee that's that this, this meeting is. Yeah, yeah, this committee. Um, okay. And I don't think I don't know if it got to the broader board either. Um, I don't think it did. Uh, uh, somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I like nobody had heard anything about it, and I was like, "Oh, there's something going on in Ronald McNair Park," and nobody had any idea. And like, this is where these projects are going to go. Like, we're the people that have to like deal with them. So, uh, so it's a uh, it's something that you know we need to figure out. Yeah. Thanks for raising that. Um... I, I believe someone from the council member's office has brought this up at a general board meeting, but it might have been more of a brief announcement than a, a formal presentation. So, you know, that's definitely why we're here tonight. And in terms of how how we can continue to get the word out, I I would love if you could, you know, commit to sharing the survey with at least five people in your network or with neighbors. Um, I would also be happy to send a flyer we have um, or even mail printed copies, but um, we're, yeah, we're trying to be everywhere at once and really want to make use of these final weeks to, to reach as many people as possible. Okay, who's next? Uh, Nicola had her hand up. We have Nicola, yeah. Mr. Thomas. Uh, Felice, Mr. Hollinsworth, and then Ms. Westerdahl. Okay, you can call me now, but I'm not going to remember more. Okay. okay. Next so question. this is Nicola. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Okay. Yeah, I am. Um, similar to Estevan, I was concerned about the outreach to Community Board 9. Um, I believe we had heard that there was some type of a study or plan um, underway, but the feedback that I got and other community residents that questioned um, Councilwoman Hudson's office about it, we were told that the focus was really on Community Board 8 and not on Community Board 9. So um, that's why I wasn't as concerned, but now I'm hearing that the this rezoning or study also affects community board nine. And as Esteban said, none of us, the Euler committee, which is the land use committee for community board nine, if anyone from this community board should have been aware and involved in the process, it should have been um, our Land Use Committee Chair Pat Moses, or some people from our community, from our committee, um, the district manager is relatively new to this district, so I'd be concerned that he's the only person from that's been representing Community Board Nine at any meetings. Um, so again, I think it's a little late if we are truly involved in the process. I'm still not quite clear on what this study is supposed to be achieving. 
We're a densely populated area. We have final Brooklyn. We're not looking for any kind of rezonings or a major development. If we could help it at the point, I think we're tapped out. So I would definitely want a more formal presentation on exactly what this study is entails and how community board nine will be affected. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure why um, you were told it would affect CB8 more, and I'm, I'm sorry if something got lost in translation there, um, but it, it definitely affects anywhere that overlaps with Council District 35, which is also sections of Community Board 2 as well. Um, so, you know, apologies if it feels like we're coming in pretty late, but it's not too late to be involved. Um, you can take the survey, share it with your neighbors. There's still time. Um, but once the framework is more developed, after we've had time to synthesize all the results from the engagement, um, we can make sure there's another visit to the community boards with more of a formal proposal when we're at that point. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Thomas? Yes, I have three questions. Uh, who's sponsoring this? I assume the councilwoman is. Um, who are the professionals doing what for an end product? You're correct that the council member's office is the project sponsor. And then um, the in terms of the professionals, that would be Hester Street, which is the organization I work for. So we assembled a project team um, and our background is in urban planning and community engagement um, and equitable development. So we've been brought on for this work. And then I think your last question was about what the end product will be. Right. And that will be a framework that will be publicly available that the council member will be using to evaluate any project that comes through ULERP in her district that's informed by community input. So are you, are you not producing some sort of land use um, suggestions? It will be more in the form of it, it's not like a land use plan for the district where we're saying, you know, put a new park here, put a new building here. It's more going to be along the lines of, um, you know, in this section of Clinton Hill, the community really prioritized grocery stores and park space. So any new development that's proposed for this section of the neighborhood um, should meet like a base level of criteria. So it, it's gonna be more of like a criteria based method of evaluating ULERP projects. Thank you. Uh, Felice? Hi, yes. I have a few questions. Okay. If this is not a zoning, what exactly is it? Uh, what if we don't want it at all? Would you respect that and take that at face value. Um, I'm speaking on this because with the dense population that we're facing and we, we, we haven't even begun to do other buildings in this area of Crown Heights, no one speaks of schools, no one speaks of uh, food um, uh, moratoriums where you know we can eat because it's becoming a desert. Uh, we're fighting for parking spaces. Um, I have to say, we were we were not aware of this. You know, as as you know, I would I would say that this is this is not this was not brought to the community board. Is what I'm trying to say. And as the um, as my other um, members have been saying, is why why is there a rush in doing this now? We're not aware of it. It's a rush. You, the area is, is very dense. We don't have schools. We don't have hospitals. We don't have food. Okay. We don't have parking. Uh, why now? And why is it a rush? Thank you. 
Yeah, so the survey asks questions along those lines of what community amenities are missing in your district or what are the major challenges. So your points about a lack of healthy food options or schools or parking, we want to hear that kind of feedback in the survey. So I, I definitely encourage you to take it. And, you know, if you feel like your neighborhood is tapped out with development, you can also put that in the survey. Like that is all valid feedback that we're trying to collect. And this framework does not mean, you know, there's going to be a massive redevelopment of, of all of Council District 35. It's just a decision-making framework for the council member to use in the event that new Euler projects come through um, during the rest of her term. I hope that helps clarify what the purpose is. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Mr. Hollingsworth. Hi. Um, yeah, I have uh, two questions. The first one is, do you have a breakdown of the survey participants? Um, I'm specifically talking about in terms of race, socioeconomic status, um, because I'm sure, as you know, the district is di diverse. Um, and if you talk to a new arrival who lives in Prospect Heights, where they've seen, you know, relatively little development, um, as opposed to speaking to someone who's a long-term resident in Southern Crown Heights, where we've seen, you know, more than our fair share of development over the past 10 years, um, I'm sure you'd get different responses. And it's it seems, from what I'm gathering tonight, it seems like the survey is going to be heavily weighted towards the wider, wealthier part of the district. And, um, and obviously, you know, uh, those of us here in CB9, we're still a majority, I'd say black, especially the Southern part of Crown Heights. So um, I'd hate to see our neighborhood decisions in terms of rezoning and land use um, being influenced by another part of the district that doesn't you know, represent us, um, like I said, either demographically or socioeconomically. And the last thing, the second question is um, the advisory council um that you showed in your presentation um i didn't see you know any organizations that have um done any um land use or anti-gentrification work um in southern crown heights on that list and i was wondering like how you went about you know getting those groups to be part of the advisory council and why you didn't specifically reach out to folks who have been doing the anti-gentrification work thank you Okay, so to your first question, um, when you fill out the survey, you can you can put um, your demographic information, and most people have done that, which is really useful in terms of seeing who's responding to the survey. And if you live in the district, you you also have to put your um, your area of residence. So we are able to look at all the results in terms of neighborhood and in terms of different demographic characteristics. So we can be sure that we're not like over counting, for example, um, like newer residents um, who are higher income, we can we can be sure to prioritize the voices of um, you know, people who are more vulnerable to displacement or longstanding residents. So we, we can use that lens when we're evaluating the results of the survey. Um, and then, and, and also since it's broken out by neighborhood, we'll make sure that, you know, input that we're getting about Clinton Hill is not necessarily relevant to Crown Heights. So we're going to, we're going to use a neighborhood based approach to make sure that we're only using Crown Heights information to, um, develop a framework for Crown Heights and all the other neighborhoods, um, and then on the advisory committee, we do have um, a representative from Housing Justice for All on the committee who you know, has done a lot of anti-gentrification organizing. And then we also invited um, members of tenants associations from the NYCHA complexes in the district, which are more in Fort Greene. Um, and we have someone from Pratt Center for Community Development 
So we did try to um, make sure that housing advocates were included. Um, so yeah, I'll leave it at that. Thank you, LaShawn. Uh, hello? Hello? Yes. Okay. Hi. Um, I am curious to know, because in, in terms of your partnerships, I mean, you have a close relationship with the Department of City Planning, a close relationship with Reynoso. You know, all of your partners are, you know, city agencies or city officials. How is the survey going to be used by those people? And, you know, you say you're including housing advocates. We all know that many housing advocates are then infiltrated by you know other organizations that do not have the same ideas about gentrification and about development so you know you can say all of these things and it sounds great on paper but we we know what actually happens um you know, once information is given to like the surveys like this quote unquote surveys and how that just opens the door for the Department of City Planning to come in and say, you know, well, let's talk about what you want. And that's not something that we're interested in. So I just would like to know how you plan on using this survey and who will it be given to? Yeah, it's it's just for the council member's office. Um, the intention, what, the, the final product will be a publicly available document on the council members website, but we're not planning to turn over the survey response data to Department of City Planning. The results are really to inform this land use framework that the council member will, will use to evaluate new projects if they're proposed and, you know, figure out if she's going to approve or, or deny the Euler project in question. And you're on top of it. <laughs> okay, who's next? Miss Washington. Hi. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. This is Teresa. Can you hear me? We can hear okay. you. Go ahead. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm very surprised to hear that Dante, the district manager for CB9, is on the advisory committee on behalf of CB9 and attending meetings. And I'm wondering what, uh, why weren't the your lip members invited to the meetings? Um, Dante doesn't attend land use meetings and he hasn't been reporting. And, you know, I'm very surprised to hear that news that he's on an advisory position with Crystal Hudson. And I wonder why uh, your lip members weren't invited, CB9 members weren't invited to these meetings. And I see that um, the Southern Crown Heights activist groups like MTOP, FLAC, those groups aren't, aren't, weren't included. Um, they were left off. So this is, a, I'm very surprised to hear that. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm on the board and I, I, I didn't know Dante was, was on your advisory board. How, how could that be happening? I mean, our, our intention with including a representative from the three different community boards was um, that they would represent the board and they would communicate internally as needed. So I'm sorry to hear that hasn't been happening. Um, but, you know, I just want to reiterate, it's not too late to get involved. And some of the advocacy organized organizations you just mentioned in Southern Crown Heights, like I, I would encourage you really to share the survey with them, um, share information about this project. On the council members uh, website, there's a page about this as well. So I'm just gonna share that link in case people want more context. Um, yeah, there, there's no chat, they turned off chat. So I, I can't see any links, sorry. I, I, how, Teresa, How long have, is this? Teresa, Ms. No. excuse me, Ms. Westedall, the chat is on. Please check your screen. No, it's not on mine. Okay, well, you, is that, you, you could work it out, but it's, it's on. No, it's fine. Right. I don't have chat. 
need to do a I can send a follow-up email um and we'll make sure to get you these links over email in case you don't have access to the chat right now. Uh, how long has this committee been meeting? This with Dante advising. A few can months. we watch? Can we watch the? Is there videos we can watch of these meetings? See what he advised. I mean, I I didn't know he was advising. It's kind of strange. Yeah, I I don't have videos, but um, I'd encourage you to talk to him. And um, I'm again, I'm I'm sorry he hasn't been communicating internally about this. Okay, thank you. We'll follow up. Um, who's next? Uh, we have Miss Boyd next, and then we have Warren. Thank okay. you. Thank you. I, I find. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I find it quite disturbing that you've been having an advisory committee working with Dante, who has not told anyone about it on what you claim is supposed to be just gathering information about what it is that the community wants when it comes to rezoning proposals, even though there is obviously during the Yolup process and before the Yolup process, an opportunity for the city council person to hear what residents and the community wants regarding proposals. I see there's a lot of money being put towards this um, what do you call it, a survey? Um, with just the, the, the so-called outcome of it just being a document that she will refer to when she um, entertains rezoning projects. And yet you have an advisory committee, you know, and that concerns me. They're supposed to be representing us. Um, advisory on what? on the survey, what is this advisory committee supposed to be doing? Is it supposed to be looking at the results and then deciding what is best for our community, if where development would be appropriate and where we would, you know, you know, I could see the advisory committee talking about, oh, Empire is just a great place to put affordable housing. Um, so I wanted to know what role was this advisory committee supposed to be um, done? The second question is, um, you said talked about the survey results. Will those results before you um, will the raw data of those results be available to the community so that we can look at the raw data and see exactly what is being proposed before you sift through it and then decide what might be the voices of the community. So that's the second question. The third question is, I went to your outreach on CB in CB9 a couple of weeks ago, about a month ago maybe, and I noticed that most of the people that were there, even though you were situated in CB9, most of the people came from CB8. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering what your raw data says about that particular outreach, because CB9 didn't really show up at that outreach. It was CB8 that showed up, even though it was physically situated in CB9. And are you classifying that particular outreach as outreach to CB9 and then stating, oh, we went to CB9 and this is what the CB9 residents said, when in fact, most of the people that were there were from CB8. So will we be seeing that raw data and that information? Okay, so the first question about the role of the advisory committee um, thus far, they've been advising on the engagement strategy, and we've been sharing with them our plans for the focus groups, the public meetings, um, and how we're getting the word out. So we've been, you know, asking them to help us spread the word, um, and if they have feedback on our outreach strategy, we've incorporated it where we can. So. Um, Again, if, if this is the first time you're hearing about it, I'm uh, I'm also a little disturbed that you, you haven't heard about it from your district manager. So um, we can definitely work to rectify that. That's, where, that's why we're here tonight. Um, so the advisory committee to date has mostly just been advising on the outreach and engagement and then, um, you know, looking ahead, they'll be reviewing some of the emerging themes and recommendations from the engagement process, from the survey results and the other inputs. 
Um, but you know, the community will also be doing that. So it's it's not like they'll be seeing things that won't be available to the public. So, you know, that brings me to the third public workshop, which we're planning for June 29th. We are looking to secure a venue that's in um, CB9 again to really focus our outreach there. Um, I believe we're reaching out to Megar Evers and Brooklyn Museum. So just stay tuned on that location. Um, but we we have noticed in the results that Crown Heights is underrepresented. So that's again while we're here, we want to get more respondents from Crown Heights and from CB9 in particular. Um, and then, oh, and the raw data. So the raw data, um, you know, we there's a lot of open-ended responses to the survey. So there's a lot of like qualitative text results to sift through. Um, so I'm trying to figure out the best way to present that information publicly, but we certainly plan to share um, the results of like who responded and what the major takeaways were, what the common themes were. And that exact format of like what it will look like, if it's just a spreadsheet or some kind of dashboard, we're, we're still working on that, but we want to be as transparent as possible. And, and I, you're not the first person to ask for that. So um, we'll be sure to make, make the results public. So, um, but I asked a very specific question, mm -hmm. Ms. Casey. Are you going to be providing the raw data to the residents? This is either a yes or a no. I'm not asking for you to, to give me a summary of the raw data. There's a difference between looking at raw data and summarizing the raw data. So the question yeah. is very specific. Well, the, so the raw data has like individual addresses and demographic information. So we might have to separate, you know, personally identifiable information from responses just for a privacy out of privacy concerns, but we'll definitely find a way to share um, the data with the public at the end of this process. I just want to make sure we're not sharing personal information um, that shouldn't shouldn't be public. And and you talked about again, you talked about the 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 this uh, this advisory. First you talked about the advisory that clearly is not working as far as letting people know about what's going on. So clearly that aspect, the advisory committee has not been very functioning very well, but you're not talking about the end result. What are they supposed to do at the end of, I mean, clearly somebody when they created this advisory committee without knowledge or information to the community about it, sat there and decided that there was an end goal for them. What is their end goal? What will they be doing at the end of this process? What will the advisory committee be doing? So they'll be reviewing the the final framework um, and and offering feedback. But like I said, the the public will also have the opportunity to provide feedback. It's not like we're only accepting feedback from the advisory committee. And who then determines exactly what that feedback winds up becoming? Who who winds up creating the document that you're planning on now disseminating? talking about what it is that we want. Who so will be the, responsible pr producing that? the actual uh, document is, that's the responsibility of, of my organization that's in our scope, but we're certainly going to take feedback on it. And I just have one more statement. You know, I noticed that city council person the city council person is spending all this time and energy on surveys and yet she has not bothered to sit there and come to us about a lot of the major concerns that we have in our community including bus removals and 5g towers and so there's all this money being put to find out what it is that people want as if it's not pretty evident what we want as a community sometimes she seems to be not clear about what it is that we want but and yet when it comes to very specific issues that are addressing in our community, the city council person has not come to us and discussed anything that is of, of our current concerns. And that is 5G towers, you know, and all this, the bus removals and uh, 
you know, having shelters in our community when we're not even notified about them. So I'm just trying to figure out why is she spending all of this money doing a survey to find out what it is that we want when we have so many concerns right now in our community that she's not even addressing. Like, you know, we got things that are really high priority here and it's definitely not a survey about what it is that we want as if you don't know what it is that we want. And so she ran and didn't understand what it was that her district wanted. Why is she out here advocating against the 5G towers? Why is she out here advocating against the removal of bus services? Hey, Alicia, Alicia, we, I got to I'm just asking, I mean, she, I don't know. I thought she was going to be here because I was going to ask her those questions. She was here earlier. Happened. She was here earlier. When, well, when, did, did people get an opportunity to ask her questions? No one had any questions for her. Oh, well, I would have. I'm sorry. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm on different time zone. I do apologize for coming in late. But please mention that to her the next time that you see her, that, you know, there's a lot of other things besides the survey that this district could use as far as her representing us and not necessarily fulfilling her obligations to us. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Boyd. Uh, Warren? Hey, everybody. It's Warren. Uh, first of all, thank you for the presentation. Um, I have a couple of concerns uh, that have already been stated, but I want to focus in on that. Uh, the first thing is, is that Community Board 9 has four, as the Community Board defines as districts, and in terms of your advisory panel, uh, three, the districts are not represented. And what bothers me about that is that these are the districts with the uh, middle-class families who are not represented by stakeholder groups, not being included uh, in this survey. Uh, we could take number one, PLG, which is highly organized. And I don't see why they weren't a part of your advisory board. Number two, if you take the Wingate section of our community, um, no one is talking about that. So I do have to question your research methodology uh, as not being complete and therefore not being accurate. Um, and I'm, I'm very concerned about that. Um, the second thing is, is that uh, I live in, I live by Empire Boulevard and I have never heard nothing about this survey. And I am very astute and very, very looking for things in terms of what being put out by your office as well as the community board. And I, I'm sorry, not your office in terms of Hester, but in terms of uh, our district councilman. So I think the end result of my comments are, I think you have an incomplete universe for your survey. Thank you. Okay, I'll just respond to, to one aspect of that, which is um, not, so Council District 35 does not encompass all of Community Board 9. So, you know, Lefferts, depending on where you consider the boundary, Lefferts isn't really in Council District 35. Um, well, POG is. No. No? No. So it's the area from where? Is from above Empire to um, uh, let's say Eastern Parkway, and then over to Ocean Boulevard. Yeah, the there's platform. a map. There's a map um, available online of the the council district boundaries. Okay. Uh, so my answer to this is the following: uh, Number one, there are a huge amount of middle class families living there. And they each have block associations. And without that being tallied or reached out to, I don't see how this can be complete. The other part is, is that, you know, development is not just by boundary district. And everyone I just talked to, I just talked about, okay, were involved. And I have to do say, I do find your advisory board unbalanced in terms of the middle class of our of our uh, district. 
And I think that's something you should consider. And I think that's important to consider before you divulge the outcome of how you're going to evaluate. Thank you. Thanks. We have one last person. Who's Jay? Yes, we have Jay. Jay, who's Jay though? Jay is muted now. Jay is muted. Hi, my name is Janice Brown. I'm, I'm a longtime resident of this community, homeowner resident. And I, I'm listening to this meeting and I'm like, I feel like I'm in the twilight zone. I don't know a thing about a survey. And I am involved in the community board. I, I'm, I'm, I feel lost here. Uh, and even though I'm understanding that uh, the advisory committee uh, is, is seeking outreach strategies and everything, and this is in Council 35, what happens in 35 impacts all of community board nine area. So, I mean, I feel that there needs to be more transparency and as far as outreach is concerned, I have absolutely no knowledge of this at all. And I'm also finding it very disconcerting that Dante would be on advisory committee. And I don't recall seeing any of this in the notices. And I think CB9 does an excellent job communicating all of the upcoming meetings. Excellent, Nia and crew, but uh, this one, it looks like it slipped through the cracks. Can you explain? Um, I mean, I, I can't speak to, um, you know, whether or not Dante has been communicating internally. It sounds like he hasn't, and I, I regret that that's the case. Um, and, you know, I'm hearing loud and clear from all of your feedback that, outreach is lacking. So we're really using the rest of this month to get the word out as much as possible. Um, you know, I, I was at the Central Library branch earlier today. On Friday, I'm going to be tabling in front of the JCC in Crown Heights with Rabbi Cohen. Um, you know, we're, we're really trying to get out there as much as possible. We'll be at CB2 next week as well at their land use committee. So you know, again, I'm, I'm I'm asking for your assistance in in sharing this information with your neighbors, with concerned citizens, with anyone else who wants to have a voice in this process. And you don't necessarily have to live within the boundaries of Council District 35 to fill out the survey. There are other options you can select, like I work in the district, or I go to school in the district, or I spend a lot of time there. So. Um, we're we're trying to, you know, I understand your point about jurisdictional boundaries and how they're they're kind of you know artificial in terms of how we experience the city. So um, I'd encourage all of you to to take the survey to spread the word and to um, reach out to me if you have other ideas about ways to get it out there. Okay, and can I just have one? I have one request. I have many, but right now, because I'm in a real fit of really disappointment with this whole thing, to say the least. But I would like for all the minutes of the advisory committee to be provided on the CB9 website so that they can send them out to all CB9 uh, community members, as well as a listing of all of the people who are on this advisory committee uh, board, because it's feeling kind of secretive. And I'm I'm not liking that. It's not a good look for transparency reasons. Okay, understood. So will you be able to send the minutes of the meeting as well as the listing of all the people on the advisory committee board and what what's going on so that uh, the people in CB9 could at least be brought up to date on what's going on? Yeah, we have notes from the meeting. Um, so if, can you forward those notes to Community Board 9 so that they can be issued? Um, or perhaps you might want to send it to every member in Community Board 9. I don't know. No, it That's, has to go through Community Board unless you're okay. an individual. Thank you. Yeah, that would be good. Thank you. 
Okay, so we got we, those out. Well, she, yeah. will she will she be sending that? She hasn't answered the question. Will she be sending the minutes? Hold on, hold on, Alicia. We we got we we gonna get to you because you're the last one now. So let's go. <laughs> let's, let's let's do this in order. We got one, two, three more people, and we're we, we got to move on. So right. who's next? We have Javi Cohen, and then we have Nicola and Miss Boyd to close okay. out. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Javi? Speaking, I can't hear you. I can't hear. I can't hear who that is. We're going to move on to Nicola. Okay. Hi. Um, put my video back on. Obviously, based on the feedback that you've received tonight, um, there has been some type of a breakdown of communication when it comes to Community Board 9. Um, as you may or may not be aware, we have been a community and a community board that has been um, really engaged in land use and the, and the land use um, decisions that have been made in our community. We've been impacted by Vital Brooklyn. We've had several rezonings along Franklin Avenue and the Botanic Gardens that we've fought against. And so I think it's only fair and just that if we are now involved in this plan, this study, and as it's clear, most of us were not aware that Community Board 9 was engaged. We need more time. A June 29th meeting, that's right before the 4th of July weekend. That's a Thursday. Most people will be heading out of town to think that we'll be able to engage our neighbors in any thoughtful discussion regarding this. Is not, um, is not fair to this community of color that has been very engaged and has been fighting hard to protect our community. And to think that uh, there are a wealth of organizations that I think are very reputable and very well known in terms of, of protecting this community. Michael Hollingsworth brought up that fact earlier. And the fact that those community, those organizations weren't reached out to, our block associations weren't reached out to, I think is disrespectful to Community Board 9. And if there was um, a lack of feedback or engagement, that alone should have told you that there was a problem with the communication with this community board. Um, the fact that, again, land use committee members weren't engaged, I, I find very disrespectful. So if there's a way that we could at least extend, extend this um, survey period to possibly engage more people and provide us with a deck and more detailed information regarding exactly how this information is going to be used. Because again, we've been fighting very hard to protect this community for quite some time. And we are very suspicious when we start hearing about district-wide studies regarding land use without knowing exactly how the information that we pr are providing will be used. So if you could take that back to this councilwoman and see what you can do to make sure that we are affected, our voices are heard and that we have the opportunity to provide um, relevant information, I'd appreciate it. Yeah, I can take that back and we'll certainly come back to all of the land use committees when um, there's something more fleshed out to review. Um, in terms of extending the project, um, we, we are bound by fiscal year deadlines in terms of spending on hard costs. So there is a challenge in that regard that I just wanna be transparent about, um, but you know, it, it's not like after June 30th, you'll stop hearing from us. There, there will be more outreach in July um, and we'll, we'll be coming back to this committee. Thank you. And who, you said Alicia was next and then that's it, right? Uh, I see Miss Alice back with her, has her hand up again. Okay, y'all gotta make it quick now. Um, you didn't answer the question by Ms. J, and that was, are you going to be sending the minutes to the advisory or the notes to the, the advisory council? Yeah, we can, we can do that. 
you will, you will be. And um, as far as Ms. Hudson, from what I've been told by some members that had attended here, she only came to this meeting for five minutes and most people hadn't even been on. I think again, her lack of staying on this meeting shows her level of disrespect that she has for CB9. She has not bothered to come to any community board meetings. She has not at, you know, gotten questions from the community board. And she's even now, oh, she was here. Five minutes to me is not a representative coming to a meeting and interacting with the community. That's her showing up at the beginning when most people wasn't here and then saying, oh, here, I'm, I'm here. This is a project that I would like and oh, bye, I'll let somebody else handle it. So again, we would, I know I would personally like to ask Ms. Hudson to, to come to a community meeting and stay for a while <laughs> and possibly answer some questions that the residents have about issues in her district because she seems to be so concerned about our voices then she might want to hear from us as well so please relay that back to her as well thank you i will i i know she had a, a conflict otherwise she would have stayed on but i'll definitely yeah I, i'm sure she must have a lot of conflicts especially when she doesn't come to the community board meetings the general ones where they have a permanent calendar, like the, the fourth Thursday, Tuesday of every month, she doesn't seem to be able to make that as well. So please let her know that it is being noted that she's not very interested in this community, except for when she wants to sit there and consider rezoning proposals in our district. Thank you. Okay, well, Sean? Yeah, and then we're gonna close out. Same one. Hi, good night. It's just basically piggyback off of what Alicia said. It was like to note that Crystal isn't even here and she hasn't been attending meetings, just like she said. So go ahead. Have a good night, guys. <laughs> okay, I think Suki and make y'all Suki make it quick. Hey, um, for the workshop on the 29th, could you tell us uh, what's going to take place um, other than handing out the survey? Is there some kind of presentation or um, is information being presented to the attendees? Yeah, that's the that's the plan. Um, we're we're still developing it, but we want to have um, like a summary of emerging recommendations from the feedback that we've gotten so far that people can weigh in on. Um, and we're we're just designing that now. So, um, but it it won't just be like we're here to take the survey that you, you'll be getting information from our team about what we've been hearing thus far in the process and we want to get your feedback on that okay thanks okay i want to thank you for coming um but i just want to uh, piggyback as to what everyone was saying and i think that lack of communication is is a big situation here I didn't even know anything was happening to, until I think uh, Esteban brought it to my attention as the ULOP chair. Uh, one of the things that I would like you to do is to send some information into Community Board 9 so that if one of our uh, persons in the community wants some information that they can have it on file. So that would definitely be helpful to put in writing. And I just wanted to say that you, you know, I I, I listened to you for, for 10 minutes, but I, I still don't even really understand what this whole situation is about. Even though you talk for maybe five or 10 minutes, I don't understand what it is that you, you want the community to do. I mean, besides the survey that we've never seen, and I don't know, did, my question to you is, did you send the survey into our community board office? Because I don't remember seeing anything. I, I've shared it with Dante. Yeah. Um, I haven't brought physical copies, <laughs> if that's what you're asking. Did you, that's what I'm saying. Did you send it in, a written copy, into our community board? Not a physical, not a physical copy. So, so, so basically, we don't have anything in writing of a survey. That's my point. So, in other words, I'll, I'll send a follow-up email um, with all the information that's been requested tonight. Right, but the survey is extremely important because, to me, if if there's going to be a survey, it has to be in writing so that 
you know, you said earlier you wanted the people from the community to really get involved besides your advisory board, et cetera, et cetera. But if, if no one sends anything in writing, it doesn't exist. And so all we're asking is that you send the information in writing. And I, I understand about advisory boards and I know that uh, district managers are involved in community and they have to be involved in community advisory boards. But it's also, it, it's also y'all need to send us information in writing, not verbal, because that's my problem. And I think that's what everybody else's problem is, that it, it needs to be in writing. So again, I want to thank you for coming and um, whatever you whatever you can send into our office, we appreciate. And Mia, would you like to tell her anything so that I might have missed in terms of information? Um, no, I'll connect with uh, Casey offline. After okay. I speak with Dante tomorrow. Okay, thank so you, Casey. Casey, thank you for coming. So hopefully the communication will improve. So again, you don't have to stay. We're just gonna go into uh something else. But anyway, thank you. All right, have a good night. Thank you, everyone. You too. Bye bye. Miss mm -hmm. Pat. Oh Jesus. Hello. Hello. Somebody say Miss Pat. Pat, this is Janice, uh, Janice. again. I, I'm sorry, but I I meant to find out because I logged in a little late. Um, what were the dates of the previous advisory committee meetings? The the two that were already held. Did I she don't know. She didn't provide the date. She just advised that two meetings had occurred. Oh, so we don't know when, where, why, or how. Okay. Well, but okay. we're asking, but we're asking her to send the information into into uh, our office so that if anyone requested, they will be able to, you know, send it to you. Correct. You know, communicate with stuff we don't have. Correct. And somebody from the advisory committee sent me all of this stuff. So I will forward it to, 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 to Mia. Read. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, great. I don't know. I, yeah. They just, they sent it to me and it's, yeah, they've had three meetings. There's like a whole presentation. Uh, three meetings. meetings? They've already so. had three meetings. I'm sorry. <laughs> Lord, I ain't never been to one. <clears throat> well, again, Esteban, we're, we're, I'm glad that you brought it to our attention because at the end of the day, if you had that, I didn't even know it even exists. So <laughs> even though we're getting ready to, this is probably our last meeting, at least we'll be able to get some information into the community office. And that way, you know, you can at least read something and then reach out to them. So again, I just want to um, thank everyone for coming. But we let's, we're going to move on to our next uh, subject here. Um, old business, um, 1512 Union Street. They proposed um, House of Worship BSA application. Has anybody heard anything about that? Any information come in, Mia? Because I haven't yeah. heard. The applicant representative, the applicant representative, did not provide any updates on the outstanding questions and requests that the committee um, provided him at the the last meeting. Mm -hmm. um, the district office will continue to follow up, and then we'll advise you uh, of the updates that we receive from him. But we'll continue to be in contact with the rep. Right. So I'm, which is great. I just put it on the agenda, but just so we would keep them in mind. But yeah, you're right. It's up to them to let us know um the updates if if they want us involved okay so next we're going to go into um committee committee concerns i mean committee updates and before the community residents come in i want the well, let me do it. Let me let me do it opposite right now. Let me hear from the community residents what your concerns are because we'll have a our session gonna be a little longer. So raise your hand. We only have one person. Okay. You have two people. Don't everybody jump up at one time now. <laughs> Sorry, Pat. That's okay. All right. So don't I, worry. We'll, 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 Pat, we'll, we'll talk. Miss Moses, we'll talk when necessary. <laughs> we'll talk when necessary. Okay, it's good. All right. Um, 
Ms. Can I go? Yeah. Can I go? Okay, I have just two concerns. What my first concern is I know that there's a new ULIP application now being proposed by uh, the Spice Factory. And I wanted to find out where exactly were we at in regards to that. Will Community Board 9 be able to provide us with, did they do an environmental assessment statement? Is it just an application before an environmental assessment? Is this the 30 day notice that's required before a determination has been made? I, I just need, there needs to be some clarity on that application because I know that there's a 30 day process before they certify the application. So where are we? Is it at the beginning of the application? Did they do an environmental assessment and environmental impact statement? I, I, we just need to know. So where can, does CB9 have that information? And can I get it without having to FOIL? I can speak to that, Ms. Boyd. We received notice that the application was filed. We received uh, no additional supportive documents, including EIS for the site. So we're waiting just like you are for further uh, updates and documentation. Okay, so they just filed. Okay, so that's good. So right. that gives us some time to review it and, and to. The second issue, obviously. Okay, I want to say, Alicia, also you can follow it too. They just send out yeah. the application. You know, you can go online and follow it. Yes, yes, okay. I, yes, I, yes. And that's very important, Pat. But, you know, for people who are not as savvy as me, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I'm talking about everybody. <laughs> it should be at the community board nine so that people can just reach out to CB9 and get it. That's that's what my concern is, not just for my own personal self. Um, the second um, thing is um, I know that we're nearing the end of um, one city of yes, and then we're at the beginning in another city of yes, and yet we're in the middle of a summer break. So I just wanted to find out was um, how how are we going to, I would assume that this committee will be presenting um, their proposal so that, that CP9 at the end of the month can vote on recommendations for the city of yes, carbon neutrality. However, we now have the second set of um, uh, city of yes proposals. Will, what will happen during the summer months does the committee plan on the subcommittee? Uh, obviously, the, well, the subcommittee has to end. Hello, am I still there? Do you still hear me? We hear, having... you. we hear you. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm having a little internet problems. This okay. is really my grandson bothering me. <laughs> but um, will, the, will a new subcommittee, because all subcommittees end at the end of the year and that's, by CB9 bylaws, so do check your bylaws. So a new subcommittee would have to be formed. Will the new subcommittee be formed so that during the summer months, they can be looking at the city of yes business proposals. Um, so, so that's a great concern because as you know, we're always on a very a short timeline. And, and this last timeline was very good because the, the subcommittee was able to look at all the proposals and really dig into it. We don't want to miss two months of that process um, because of the summer and then be stuck with business proposals that we then have to make recommendations on very quickly without really delving into it. So will this committee be considering um, creating a new subcommittee for July, for the summer of 2023? So those are my two issues. Thank you. Well, I, I don't really have the answer for that, but I just want to say um, that um, the second half of it goes into, I think is uh, economic, is, is economic. So that would go into that particular, um, it wouldn't go into you, but it would go into that particular uh, head, whoever heads that. So- Yeah, yeah, Pat, what I'm, what I'm saying is, is that because they're now presenting that for the community to um, weigh in on, and they're doing it at the beginning of the summertime, the com community needs to have an opportunity to, to review it. And so I'm asking if this EULA committee will consider creating a new EULA committee for, or even if you can just vote to extend the current one, but you do have to consider that it's supposed to end at the end of the month, I'm only doing by the bylaws. And then just you know put in put in a, um, a motion to you know end this one and continue or continue it to the next one so that in in July you have the option if 
board members and committee members want to meet to look at the new proposals, um, the business proposals. That's what I'm asking. So I'm asking for you guys to consider a motion um, to uh, either extend the committee into the summer months or, you know, or to create a new committee. But either way, you do have to do something because CB9 bylaws require that all subcommittees end at the end of the, of the year. And so that's in June. Okay. Just trying think, to do the bylaw stuff, you know. True. Just, okay. um, it, it really needs to be brought up to the executive committee because like you said, I mean, no one really has to meet during the summer months according to our bylaws. So I'm not sure how that would work. That would probably have to be a special committee. Again, that's something that the chair would have to talk over with the exec committee. But, um, in, but in any event, as they're going forward, According to their timeline, by the time they really get into what's going on, we'll all be back. We'll be back. Okay. Um, who else? We have a Lori Cornelius. Uh, yeah. Uh, hi. I'm a resident hi. of uh, City Council District 36. Um, just FYI, FYI, I'm a college student, just kind of learn more about like political processes and all that. So um, I'm just curious and let me know if this question like isn't the most relevant or isn't phrased very well, but how exactly can like we speak out against certain rezoning things or like the environmental damages of taller buildings? Cause I'm particularly concerned about green spaces like the Brooklyn Botanical Gardens. I'm wondering like, what can I do uh, like, who do I write a letter to? What kind of feedback do I do? What should I say? Things like that. I wasn't quite sure what exactly the woman before was talking about with the presentation. I think she was saying something about um, the survey to, to get to know more about what the residents wanted, but I just realized I'm not a part of that district. Whoops. But um, yeah, the, that was just my question. Thank you. I... You're in, you say district, what, 36? Is that what you said? Yeah, yeah, city council district 36, yeah. Okay, so, and 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 you, you, you attend meetings, but where do you attend them at though? Because your community board should be able to assist you. Who, what is your community board is what? Who's um, <laughs> board what? That's the thing I wish I knew. I'm still trying to get more access to like that kind of oh, information. So you don't know, yeah. you don't know. Okay, so you don't know where your community board is. Where, where, I don't, I'm not trying to get your address, but we're trying to get maybe, <laughs> John can, I don't know who can help because I don't really know like in terms of your district. Um, Lori, or do you live between um, Eastern Parkway and Atlantic Avenue or past Fulton? Um. How do I say this without just saying the street name? Because you could probably be eight or three because you're covered by council member Osei. Oh, council God. member Osei. Um, wish I could provide you with that information. That's um, fine, but um, it, we can clarify that. If you want to reach out to the office, uh, staff will be in at 9 a.m. tomorrow. We can give you some context of who you should be reaching out at yeah. your CB. Um, your local electives and uh, a listing of uh, meetings that would be helpful for you to attend to gain some further knowledge. That'd be great. What um, contact information, what uh, contact should I like? Sure. You can reach the board office at 718-778-9279. Um, you can either ask for me, uh, Mia Hilton, the district manager, Dante Arnwine, or the community associate, Khalid Jamat. Oh, and either of us will be able to assist you. Can you write that in the chat, please? Sure. <laughs> a lot of numbers. Like, wait, 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 wait. We have the chat. So, Miss Alicia, we, you're laughing, but we got. We the do chat. not. I do not have a chat. Chat. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're a little. The chat is for you. The chat was there, but there the chat is, no is not chat. there. But I'm sorry. There's no it, chat. It, it was there. Uh, Lori, seven one eight seven seven eight nine two seven nine. Seven seven eight nine nine two seven nine. Seven nine and the email address bk09 one at cb09 one at, at cb.nyc.gov. Or you can just head over to our website and just drop your question in the contact tab 
with your request and just advise that you attended ULIP and you're seeking um, information relevant to your part of Brooklyn. Mm. In, okay. okay. Thank you. Well, we thank you for coming to our meeting. Yeah, because I got, um, I found out about this because it was, um, I think it was something on behalf of the Brooklyn Botanical Garden and they were concerned about rezoning and amendments to uh, a law regarding like more stuff on top of buildings that would cause a lot of shading issues and would cause issues for that garden. Now, it's like, even though I may not be in a district, you know, that would still affect me because I'm still a part of the Brooklyn community, um, you know, especially as a woman of color. So that's kind of why I wanted to know. I, I, I was wondering if this would still be a helpful meeting for me to attend. Yes, it yes, would be. Yes. Yeah. yes, it would be. You, it would you definitely, definitely want to be. attend this one because our community board is actually the one that's supposed to be representing that particular area. So staying involved with us is very important. Okay, okay. Don't you go anywhere, okay? <laughs> okay, okay, good to know. Uh, right here. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, I'm going to Michael. Um, yes, I'll, I'll be quick. Um, she may also be interested in like uh, joining MTOP or FLAX mailing list because they've obviously done a lot of the pushback against development that would harm the Brooklyn Botanic Gardens. Um, is she there? Yeah. I don't know. She, is she yes, uh, I am. Oh, you're still there? Yes. MTOP or FLAC mailing list? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you let me give you my tell the telephone number, okay? And then you can just yeah. reach out. You're gonna give your telephone number out, out loud? Yeah. Okay. My, my number is public. Anybody, everybody got one. <laughs> okay. So, all, right. all my flyers. Go ahead. 718-703-3086. But Lori, I'm not in the country right now. So okay. oh, I, wow. Yeah, I'm in Bangkok. Hello. Wow. Oh, boy, you dedicated. Nice. Okay. Yeah, yes, I am dedicated. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, so um, so again, it's 718-703-3086. So call me next week sometime and I will be able to put you on our email list. Okay. And that you're and that's the email list for MTOP or Flack? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's out. And we'll keep you informed about what's going on. And they they could give you a lot of also information. That's yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah, Thank I'm, you. I'm, and I'm sorry, Ms. Pat, I just add just one more thing I wanted to hey, say. Michael, go ahead. Yeah, really quickly. Um, I think um, what I what my, one of my main takeaways from tonight is that um, I don't think these things sort of happen um, by accident. And I think the fact that the overwhelming response from the community board members tonight was that we just didn't know about this thing as it's winding down this, you know, this whole survey process. Um, until two weeks from the um, finish line, um, that's really suspect to me. And, um, you know, as someone who was born and raised in New York City, um, uh, I'll just say, um, the last thing I'll say is I, I know a con when I see one. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Okay, now we're going to... I would like the committee members, if you want to say something. I'll all jump up at one time now. Suki? Uh, okay, are, are you guys ready to hear about City of Yes? If uh, anyone else wants to speak first and it's shorter, okay. go ahead. But, but yours is going to be short anyway, because at the end of the day, we're not going to rehash what was said in your meeting, which you, when you come to this meeting, it's like a summary type of a situation. Yeah. Okay. No, I need, I need, can you give me like three minutes to I'll summarize? Give you, I'll give you five. Okay. All right. Go ahead. So, um, Go ahead. Mm -hmm. the zero carbon text amendments have entered the public review process and city planning will accept comments from community boards until July 3rd. And the City of Yes Zoning Subcommittee has met each month from January to June in public meetings to discuss the proposed amendments and vote on our recommendations. We've held a public meeting with GCP staff on June 6th to field community questions about the zoning tax amendments. Um, and so our uh, resolution, um, we gave some background. We're concerned about preserving the historic and residential character and scale of our neighborhoods and our public sunlight sensitive resources like the Botanic Gardens and Prospect Park. 
The vast majority of buildings in CB9 are pre-war brick or stone and low scale, less than five stories. Apartment buildings are six story pre-wars. We're concerned about preserving our affordable housing stock. 68% of units are located in rent stabilized buildings as well as middle-class co-ops. And CB9 is concerned about resident health and safety given that we suffer from elevated rates of asthma from urban heat island effect, from excessive noise, serious building code violations, and a trend of destructive fires, street litter, and rats. We're concerned about the limited ability of city agencies to enforce all types of um, city existing city codes related to health, safety, and nuisance. And we want to preserve and create car and bike parking spaces for individual non-commercial use because parking is extremely tight in this very dense district and a significant number of residents own cars. So we have the following recommendations. On renewable energy for solar panels, um, we do not think that there should be increased rooftop coverage at the maximum heights to 100%. We recommend no change to the existing rules in the lower density districts, which is R1 through R5, because we're concerned about shadows on neighboring green roofs, which also contribute to climate change mitigation by absor absorbing stormwater and providing rooftop insulation. We're concerned about the visual impact of one story high solar panels on two story homes. And in the R6 through R10 districts, we're recommending that the maximum height of the solar panels be linked to the height of the building with at least a six foot setback. Again, we're concerned about the visual impact of 15 foot tall, which is two story solar panels on buildings, which can be anywhere from two to six stories in the R6 and R7 districts. They're really not that tall in our district. Um, on solar canopies in uh, all zoning districts, the proposal would increase the maximum height of solar canopies in rear yards from 10 feet to 15 feet if they're located over a parking space. Um, our recommendation is that in residential districts, the heights should be limited to eight feet. Again, we're concerned about the visual impact and the shadows. Um, at 15 feet, this would be taller than backyard fences, which are only 10 feet tall. Um, and this height, okay, so in commercial districts, we agree with the maximum height of 15 feet to accommodate commercial vehicles like trucks and vans, but with a 15 foot setback from any residential property line. Um, as far as grid scale solar battery storage and wind turbines, um, this would allow non-accessory solar um, systems up to 10,000 square feet without a special permit wind turbines of unlimited size in waterfront areas for the special permit. Our recommendation is that we would not permit industrial uses such as grid scale, solar, battery, or any wind turbine in any district within 500 feet of residential housing. On buildings, um, we do not think that um, permitted obstructions for wall thickness should be increased. We think it should be decreased since newer insulation like aerogel is less thick. We're concerned about the alteration of historic building facades because most of our buildings aren't yet landmarked. Um, we recommend no increased FAR bonus to accommodate accessory mechanical equipment and wall insulation because the code is double counting um, these exclusions and bonuses. And this ends up being an upzoning without community review. Uh, we're concerned about incentivizing extensive renovations on older buildings that would increase monthly costs for tenants and possibly trigger rent destabilization. Um, and again, you know, we're concerned about incentivizing the alteration of unlandmarked historic buildings. Um, on rooftop mechanical uh, obstructions, we recommend no increase. Um, the existing rules should be sufficient even to accommodate additional HVAC on the roofs for electrified buildings. We're concerned that vertical stacking of HVAC will be used to create private rooftop terraces. Again, an upzoning without community review for non-public outdoor space. Um, on transportation, we do support EV charge sharing and residential garages, but we still want public curbside charging should be more affordable. Um, we don't want commercial vehicle parking, um, even in the commercial parking lots, because we prefer to preserve parking for residents. And this does not advance environmental goals at all to let commercial vehicles park um, in, in parking lots. On bicycle and micro mobility storage, yes, um, we would allow that. 
um, on the FAR relief for automated parking facilities. Uh, we're not opposed to that. Uh, we're concerned, again, that the automated parking facilities allow a much greater density of vehicles compared with regular garages, and this leads to a risk of fires from lithium ion batteries. Um, similar to the battery storage issue. Um, on sustainability, sewers and solid waste for permeable paving, are, um, we are in favor of that, but not on any e-designated sites, um, which are polluted sites. So this may increase polluted runoff. Um, we want to be careful about what type of permeable paving, no gravel. Um, it should meet all building codes for structural soundness. Um, street trees, yes, we like trees, but they should be trimmed regularly by the city. Some of us have too many trees or the trees are too close to the windows. And these very large tree pits should be avoided because they obstruct curb access and sidewalks. Um, on the retail storefront composting and recycling, um, we said no to that because we're concerned that it would attract rats, flies, odors, dirt, more traffic and noise. Um, these are normally industrial uses in manufacturing areas. Um, and it conflicts with current city policies for sanitation to pick up compost and process it. Um, on the greenhouse permitted obstruction on commercial buildings um, to remove the special permit, we said no. Um, and we think that the permitted obstruction should be limited from 25 feet to 15 feet and from 100% of rooftop coverage to 25% of rooftop coverage in order to avoid what would otherwise be an upzoning without community review. We also think that this greenhouse does not advance any sustainability goals without requirements that the plants grown be food and be sold in the immediate area. So that's, that's all I have for you. Okay, so that was your your committee, the subcommittee, uh, is that what the subcommittee voted on? So that's what we voted on. What are you um, submitting though? Are you submitting questions or resolution? You, you had two things going so on. So we're, we're submitting a resolution at this point. Um, I understand that, yeah. that GCP is continuing to talk about this issue and there will be a public hearing on July 26th. Right. True. Um, someone has, uh, John has a question, I guess, for you, Suki, or any other the members that uh, on the subcommittee. Thank you, Pat. Um, so first of all, I want to say, Suki, that was an impressive summary. Obviously, uh -huh. a lot of work has gone into that. Um, uh -huh. I'd, I'd like to know, um, can I be involved in whatever next round of uh city of yes proposals uh their evaluation I, I mean it's it's an impressive amount of work that you put into that i just i don't know when these meetings happened well it's a whole committee i mean uh, they, they got you there. came to a couple of our meetings john they got I sent just, out by the board office i and just don't remember were. i don't remember um, all of this dialogue i mean like there's the the thoroughness that's that you just went through i don't remember all of that, uh, they, that oh, no, we and went that through each and every one twice in two, at least two meetings. I, I, don't right? I kept any... them until I broke a record with an 11 o'clock uh, meeting until, <laughs> okay, let, until let, Fred did me one better. Let me so just, many I, hours. I'm <laughs> not sure just, if that's something to be proud of, but okay. John, let, <laughs> no, me just say, let me just say how they basically, <laughs> they, they normally, okay, the reason that you, they normally have discussions and trust me, they have discussions uh, at bedtime at 10 30 at night so they have discussions and what happens is that they at the end they pull together their writings so that's why you you, you haven't seen it like that because okay. they discuss first and then they pull together with their group what it acts because you can't write 10 pages so you gotta like you know make it quick but yes okay. please please come to the meetings everybody is welcome i know i was at one of them but i just don't i mean you you've used some terminology tonight that was you know very insightful and and really uh indicates some very thoughtful discussion i just don't recall any of that uh, I think that we, we actually like we that. actually we actually talked about it uh you know i mean we have we have architects um who this, have been coming to all our meetings but like the, the mention helpful. of like double stacking the condensing units and causing floor area uh, to be created. Uh, I, I just don't uh, remember any of that discussion. Okay, I'm going to ask. Well, that's to that, okay. Hold on, hold on a second. Before I move on, John, did you come to the June 
six meeting where the presentation was given by I, uh, I think I had planning. I had another obligation that oh, night. So maybe okay. that so was I'm where just, a lot oh, of this I just want to know now because okay. they you know they do they all all our meet I promise you all our meetings are recorded they're posted online yep, um yep. you know okay okay I just I, I don't want to take up more time tonight but thank you for the information okay well thank you John yep. okay um who else Cohen Am I saying your name right? Yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, great. Okay, I, I want to second what John said. The um, summary was amazing. I wasn't able to come to all the meetings, but it really caught me up on a lot of the things. I wanted to ask um, one small thing that um, detail that I, Suki said about um, the tree planting. We all love trees, but that it um, blocks the sidewalk. And I uh, personally have seen this happening. People can't get through with shopping carts. They can't get through with um, baby carriages. Uh, even it's supposed to be handicapped, accessible. And they're like, they've literally done the exact, exact, if you can literally just pass through a, um, a wheelchair that's really not comfortable and you're really not really able to get it through. And so I wasn't sure. Um, did the board suggest against um, making the, the plot of the trees too large so that it obstructs? Because I think right yes. now, so right now I think it's three feet, which is like an exact for a wheelchair. Um, but we're like a neighborhood, like we're, we're, we're a neighborhood where we, there's kids around and there's shopping carts and there's double strollers and that that's not fitting through. I mean, it, it's just not getting through. Is there any, you know, how, what was the proposal that they wanted to make it larger or you're asking that they make so it So there smaller? is a proposal that tree pits, um, so in new developments, they're required to put in tree pits um, every 25 feet. But the proposal is that if the tree pits for some reason are um, less than 25 feet apart, that they be connected. So potentially you would get a tree pit that, you know, a, a giant connected tree pit that's 40 feet long. Oh, um, wow. So we're concerned about that. We're also wow. concerned about some of these extra deep tree pits, you know, like normally they're, as you say, like three feet deep or something, but like there's, a we've seen a few that are like five feet deep and, uh, you know, everybody's kind of like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, yeah. sometimes it's done with older trees because the roots have heaved already. Um, right. But, you know, like one of our committee members was saying for new trees that shouldn't be done. Right, right. Okay. I, well, I, I've seen like the newer trees that they're putting out now and the roots are already coming out. They're already surfacing. They're already surfacing. So you know that the sidewalk is going to start coming up. It's just a matter of time. Okay, thank you. Um, and we're going to move on, but um, are you getting ready to put a um, a motion on the floor? Because yes. it has, because it, it has to. Okay, before you put the oh, motion on the floor, Esteban. let me hear from Esteban. Yes. Um, no, I just wanted to 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 say it. It isn't really necessary to have for everybody on the committee to have the technical knowledge to be able to write what uh, Suki wrote. Like we have people that do this stuff. Uh, and they have time to do it and are able to do it. Um, so, yeah, I just I was a little bit offended by that uh, by that comment. It made it, seem, it made it seem like there's no way that that these people could possibly uh, could possibly come up with something that detailed. And I know that's probably not what you meant, but that's how it came off. That's um, not what I so, meant. Absolutely not yeah. what I meant. Well, it's yeah. definitely um, the way that I received it. Well, then okay, then I apologize. That was not my intention. But just so you know, we did have two architects who, who came every time and um, Tom, who's uh, yeah, he, he's an engineer. So we, we actually did have lots of technical help. And, you know, uh, uh, Esteban, Alicia, Nicola, they're they've all spent lots and lots of time at ULERP. So, you know, we're all kind of familiar with a so lot before, of these concepts. Right. So before but, we put the motion on the floor, um, Suki, I just wanted you to, for the record, I know other people show up, but you have your, wh whoever your committee members are. And then we also have uh, community residents that show up consistently. 
And I, I just want to throw the name. Teresa, <laughs> Teresa has been at every meeting. Okay, I just no, want to no, say- no, but I want you to start with, tell them who, who are okay. the committee. So members. Um, our, our committee and, members are and then, myself. Let me finish. And then okay. who are not the residents that come one every now and then, the residents yeah. that come all the time. We just like to acknowledge that. Okay. I just want yes. to put records. Yes. So can you say that real quick? Okay, so start? the committee consists of myself, Esteban, um, John Craver, Nicola. Um, that's it. That's it, yeah. And um, we've had regular attendance uh, by uh, Alicia Boyd, um, by Teresa Westerdahl, um, by Andrew Magnus, um, who else? Felice has come a couple of times. Nicholas has come a couple of times to us. Um, John, you came, I, I think, once at least. Um, well, John doesn't fit in. We're talking about the people that come in a consistent. Right. So John, <laughs> you got to come a little bit more. Um, <laughs> um, let, let me see who who else has been. I just I just joined. Jay, Jay, Sor <laughs> Jay Sorid has come you quite a few already, times. Um, and and so let me just say I really want to thank everyone for all of their hard work and all of the hours you put in. I just I cannot believe you guys stuck with me, but thank you, <laughs> thank you for. And we thank you for your detailed leadership because you've been, really been pouring through all of these text amendments and trying to, you've gotten to levels of detail I never thought we would get to. So thank you. Right. And I just want to say this in, because someone needs to put a, that motion on the floor. But before we put the motion on the floor, I just want to say this, that I, you know, you can go online and you can listen to their meetings and some of them really go about four hours. So trust me. You get a whole lot of sleep, but but they're there and they are there as a group and they might not agree, but at the end, they, they all come together. So I, I, I definitely appreciate the work that you're doing. And one of the reasons that I appreciate the, the work that they're doing is because we only, I think uh, we were supposed to start like April. I think it was April, right? That uh, the text, uh, the text, uh, was it the text hearings? Did they start in April? I think April is that when they started. Well, the, the, review the, process. the full text, the, the full text amendments didn't come out until the um, very end of April, and that's when the right it was the, April, right? Yeah. And, and as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm looking. At it, it says April 24. Yes. And they said that we we're, we're supposed to. It's they're going to be reviewed by uh, 59 community boards, and we're one of them. So I am. Um, appreciative that we actually have something i mean whether they answer us or not we actually have something to to you know to, to submit to the city of yes um yeah from, i'm i'm from, really from community board nine i'm so, i'm really proud of us usually it's only the manhattan boards that have so much to say about these things but you know we're we're up there with with the, uh, and, the and there is one other thing that I, I really wanted to to put on the record. Um, I I I looked through the Brooklyn paper and I also saw that it was announced in in uh, the Brooklyn paper um, on on your meeting for June sixth. It was announced in the Brooklyn paper. I also went oh. online and saw that. Um, Community Board Nine had it also in blast, and then I was at a um, I, I forgot where, where we were at. Like at the park, they actually handed out, you know, the paper. So everybody knew. Now that the problem I have, and I can't do anything about it, is that the people don't, you know, the people don't don't tune in or, or come until it's too late. And to me, uh, that's why I do appreciate everybody that's participating and even though we're going to end it's still you can still get information from um the community board office and suki um thank you for chairs and all of the committee um because i hear y'all i mean sometimes i have nothing to do i listen to four hours and three hours of stuff so i listen because i don't want to like not be respectful but I do need someone to put the motion on the floor because nothing can go forward and we're running out of time. Nothing can go forward unless it goes through our exec committee who has to send it to the full board. 
Now, me, I wanted to ask you a question. Um, before they put the motion on the floor, because um, we know we're going to send it on to the exec, is it possible that we can send that information ahead of time to the exec committee and the board? So they can read yeah. Huh? Um, yeah, Sylvia has copied me on all the correspondence, so we can definitely get it over to the executive committee ahead of the, the next meeting so that everyone is properly informed about what what is coming out of the Europe committee and City of Yes subcommittee. Right. And and would, would the board members be able to read it in advance? Because I know their last meeting is going to be really, really long. Um, yeah, and, and it looks like it may be in person. So uh, the materials will be forwarded to the committee and the board ahead of time. Yes. Materials. So that way, all they have to do is vote. And available on site, should anyone need to reference. Great. Because at the end of the day, I, I want them to be able to read it in advance. And then so they can have a vote because they go on and on and on and on. So everybody will have the meeting. And I didn't know we were meeting in person. Um, so. Before we get into meeting in person, um, can somebody put a motion on the floor? Okay, um, I'll put a motion on the floor um, for us to vote um, on sending the resolution that the City of Yes subcommittee has created on the Zoning for Zero Carbon amendments to the full board. Um, through the executive board. To the executive committee, approved, followed by the full board. To the full board. Yeah. And what's the full board meeting? When is that? Um, June 26. Monday, uh, Monday, Monday, right? Monday. It's Monday, June 26, 7 p.m. because of primary day. Oh, that's why. Okay. And are you going to be going in person? When will they be? Um, it looks like it may be that way. So we have to make tentative plans. We have oh, to hold on. Hold on. Wow. I, got a, I got a motion on the floor here. Sorry. I got a Sorry. second. We can, we can deal okay. with that later. Thank uh, you. One of the things, um, uh, Suki, I want you to read back the motion, but can you read when you when you talk about the executive um, committee? Can you put the date that they meet so we can have everything in order? Like, Okay. They um, meet in the date that the board meets. So let's read. Let's let's try to get this together. Here. Let me see, Mia. Can you help help us out? When is when does the executive meet? Is she there? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What'd you say, uh, Suki? Could you could you could you tell us when the executive board meets? Uh yes. The executive committee is scheduled to meet. I believe the twenty. Second, hold on, hold on, guys. Sorry, I know that it was a rescheduling due to a, a, some of the members. Just give me one moment. Okay, I'm just putting the dates in there so that um, we can have it all in order. You know. Oh, that is actually um, Thursday the 15th. Um, it's, tentatively, it's, it's tentatively scheduled for the 15th, but it may be rescheduled. So I'm going to tell you that you should omit the date just okay. in case it has to be. It simply just escalates to the executive committee and have it moved on to the full board at general board. Okay. You shouldn't have to include the date. Okay, so the full board is, is going to meet on the 26th, am I correct? 7 p.m. Okay, so okay, so Suki, can you read it back now so we can try to get it together? So, mm -hmm. um, motion to send the City of Yes subcommittee resolution on the zoning for zero carbon text amendment to the executive committee, um, followed by the full board. I second. Executive committee. For approval to forward to the for approval to follow to, to approval forward to the to full, full board meeting on forward to June 26. Okay. I'm gonna have you just read it back one more time so that we can get it right. Yeah. Okay, so motion to forward the City of Yes subcommittee resolution 
on the zoning for zero carbon text amendments to the executive committee for approval to forward to the full board on June 26. Can I get a second? <laughs> second it like eight times. <laughs> I didn't hear you second. Well, you got a second for real now. Can I get a second? I second. Um, Suki, just for uh, our purposes, let's do a roll call so there's no okay. questions about anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. So, uh, Pat Moses. Yes. Warren Burke. He seems to have dropped off. Okay. Um. Suki Chong. Yes. Uh. Nicola Cox. Yes. Esteban Huron. Yes. John Craver. Yes. Tom Thomas. Yes. Um. Yeah, I guess. So the motion passes. Motion passes. Yay! <laughs> yeah. So again, it's been it's nice. It's nice. Uh, it's nice working with all of you all. I, I will be breaking for the summer. Alicia, um, I'm glad that you attended our meeting out of the country. <laughs> I've done that quite often, Pat. The, every I time didn't know, we well, see I don't I'm have no okay. So you know what? Again, I want to just thank everyone. Um, and I don't know who the who your next chair will be, but I know that you know somebody should be able to move to chair at this point in life. You know, that's why we have a chair and a co-chair and whatever, so that when one <laughs> steps down, other one steps up. So don't everybody raise their hand at once when they ask you, okay? You're not going anywhere, Pat. <laughs> listen, some of y'all got to chair these meetings, doctors. Listen, but I, I that, think you, that, what people I, need to do, Pat, if people need to come to your meeting and see how you run your meeting, you need to do workshops on how you get your meetings done, okay? <laughs> That's what I'm you need right, to do, okay? I mean, because the four-hour meetings, you know, come on, people, let's move this along. <laughs> so they that's what you need to be doing you need to be sitting there training uh, yeah, other okay no, i'm serious giving some classes i would love yeah, that I'm, I'm serious pat i'm serious well thank you Lisa. i'm going to compliment from you oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> alicia i don't know alicia, what to do. alicia you're putting pat back into ocfs mode <laughs> yes who said that Dion ashman from ghost yeah, secure yeah. center <laughs> you're right that's where you put me right back there you put her back into into the training academy up in red hook oh, okay. oh you tell all the business now <laughs> nobody knew that nobody knew that you're telling all the business uh -huh. so uh, before we close out um i want everybody to have a a uh, a safe and enjoyable summer and if you can if you can attend that meeting, I mean, that public hearing that's going to take place, um, please do. What I said is, on July 26th, I think it's important um, for the people to attend uh, the Community Planning Commission on the 26th. So anybody, we, we get ready to close out, or we got two minutes, people can say anything, not anything, because we're online, but... Um, Anything that you'd like to say before we close out? And again, Alicia, thank you for coming. And I want to thank everybody for coming. I'm well, really I want to say of, I'm really thank proud you of the to way everyone that, uh, for a great for a great year for all the work you guys do. Oh well, thank you. Your visitor, okay. And Nicholas, we're still waiting to hear about green hydrogen. <laughs> oh, I'm, 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 I'm working on it. I'll be ready for you because I think it will make a difference as opposed to putting uh, solar panels because the, what I'm talking about will allow for this particular historic home to, over, to be decarbonized without having to put solar panels on top of their roof. So we'll have that presentation. The only problem Thank I you. have is that so okay. Come on, we'll you have a one minute down hurry up now. Do that presentation. <laughs> okay. okay, so thank, thank you, everybody. You. Right, John, thank you. you want to say something close? I, I was right, that's the one. Go ahead. Yeah, look, yeah. Uh, no, I just I'm I'm proud of the way that this uh not just the 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 committee, but also like the community members and how we like the way that we handle 
uh, you know, city agencies or developers or whoever that's coming on here. It's really great to see everybody's on the same page. We are backing each other up. Um, nobody's coming in here and like getting the better of us. Uh, and I just think it's really, it speaks to the work that has been done, but also, uh, you know, it's good solidarity across the board. So happy about that. Thank you, John. So yeah, I wanted to mention, and I'm, I'm surprised it didn't come up in, in, in this committee, there's a, 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 a ULERP that's been, it was, we were sent notification on the 6th of June. Uh, it's on Franklin Avenue. I'm just not sure, is that gonna be a future uh, subcommittee topic? We, we discussed just it earlier, actually. Oh, you did? Have yeah. I been asleep? What the heck? Yeah, you gotta work okay. out. Yes, okay. All right. Sorry. Okay. So when is that? When is that going to be discussed? It, we yeah, it hasn't received, entered the received, process yet. Process yet? Yeah. We just received notification. That's okay. all. Okay. And there, there's a bunch of documents um, that are available on the um, on the. Yeah, I've been combing through them. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So hello. Um, can what, I have what, twenty seconds before you close? Hello. Who wants twenty seconds? Um, I'm new. Uh, my name is Deborah James. This is the first time I attended the community. Okay, Deborah James. Meeting. Go ahead, Deborah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, it's the first time I've actually attended one of the meetings, and it's by phone, unfortunately, so I could not see any of the things, and I've been really stirred up. Um, <laughs> I want to know how I can uh, uh, become a member, or so uh, can I just go online and get the information? I live over on Washington Avenue. I have been a part of this community, but not the community board. I mean, not the community, um, yeah, community board nine. So um, I just wanted to become officially and start attending the meeting. Unfortunately, it's the end of the season for you from what I heard, but I would like to start uh, participating immediately, if I may. Yeah, Mia, yeah Mia, Mia will give you that information. Sure thing. Uh, you can give uh, the district office a call in the morning okay. at 718. I've got it. I've got the number. I've been calling to us. 778-9279. Okay, perfect. So a staff member. And that thank way, you for the meeting. Yeah, it was an eye opener. Thank you. And that way you could also make, you know, come to uh, uh, the June meeting with the, uh, and yeah. I'm not sure, Amir, you need to tell me that's going to be in person. I didn't know that. Um, it's looking like it may be in person. We haven't received definite confirmation, but we're making tentative plans because we can't wait to the last minute to secure a space for 50 members plus True. The public. Okay, so everybody, everybody take them clothes out. <laughs> some off now. We got we got to look some kind of way. And uh, Lisa, you can start wearing all them shoes and stuff you'd be buying. You know. So again, I want to thank everybody and good night. And we will talk again. Thank you, Suki, for thank being you. here. Thank, thank you, Bob. Thank you for bringing stuff to our attention because we didn't have a clue. <laughs> well, thank and you for always keeping me on track. Yeah, y'all don't know. Y'all don't know, but I'll be right. like, yeah, I'll be like the school teacher but with her, but <laughs> we get it together, you know? So anyway, can I get a motion to adjourn? I move the motion adjourn. to adjourn. I second. Okay. Good night. Take care, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, Good night. Good night everybody. Good night, everybody. Take care. Good night. 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 Good night.